All right, tonight um, I thought I'd give you one more little thing to kind of follow up what uh, Pamela had done last week or last time, I guess it was two weeks ago, um, with mammals. And I thought, well, now I'm going to do skulls. So in case you see skulls on your property, this will kind of give you a little bit more clues of, you know, what to look for. Um, uh, but <clears throat> these are some of the... Uh, I. Of course, the book isn't this big, but um, I did 11 by 17s of all the uh, the skulls in in the in the book, um, and a lot of them are actual size, so which is kind of cool. But um, it's a it's a really good reference, and of course, it would only be for the mammals. Um, but if you want another reference, um, this has animal skulls, and I don't know which way to turn this thing. Okay, so this one you can see got a little bit abused. I have another copy, but I didn't bring that one. But um, this one <clears throat> is really good. It gives you, like, if you remember when she was talking about uh, dentition, um, you know, like, I don't know, are there dentists here? Well, yeah, orthodontist. Somebody's trying to pull something back there. Um, but there's, um, I'm looking for my picture. Here we go. Okay, but if you, if you take a look at this, you know, the way that they categorize the teeth, at least for mammals, um, you know, the two on the, the end are the molars, then the four right there are premolars, a canine, and then the six um, incisors. The way that they do the dental formula when I show you up here is they do it by quadrants, so you know, it'll be like, if they do it, it'll be three, one, four, two. And that's the way it'll read. And then you can add that up. Sometimes the teeth in the top are more than the teeth in the bottom. So, but those are little clues you can use to figure out, you know, what's what on your property. Um, <clears throat> so what is a skull and what's it for? Yeah, so protects the brain. There we go. And since you just ate, I have real brains. Um, so I thought I'd pass it around. Jesse, take a look, man. Um, and then here. Um, <clears throat> and we got another brain. You ready? Here it comes. <laughs> okay, so the skull is to protect brains. Um, so it's on all the vertebrate animals. So that's fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Um, so with mammals, you know, sometimes it's a little more complicated because you got to look at dental formulae. So I'll show you. All right, so here. All right, so if you look at the top one and then it will equal 50, that one is for the, the animal that's got the most teeth, uh, the mammal that has the most teeth. Anybody know who that is? No, it's not us. No way. Mammal. Mammal with the most teeth. I'll take that away before you read more. A possum. Yeah. So it's got 50 teeth. So when they do that little smile and you freak out, it's probably found, well founded. But, you know, they're, they're pretty simple. Um, okay, so <clears throat> one of the little um, things that helps you identify some of the skulls just like when we did scat and you're looking at different shapes and things like that. Um, for this, you're going to look for the teeth and see if there are ones that are for cutting or if there are ones that are more for uh, grinding or something like that. And then we'll get into some of the, the weirder skulls. I have some, some bird and reptile, maybe an amphibian. Um, so let me start out with a couple in here. All right, so we'll, we'll do an easy one. <clears throat> okay, so this will probably be easy to see in my hand than anywhere else. Okay, who knows what that is? It's a beaver. Okay, so some of the clues, and, and you know, you might, maybe you don't know much about beavers, so then you can learn more about them by looking at the skull once you figure it out. So you can tell that this animal likes to swim you know, this way, and have its eyes above because it can hide. 
Um, its eyes are set kind of up here. Um, and then this right here, it's called the zygomatic arch. And most of the animals will have that, and it's to protect. It's the same as like right here, to protect your eye. Um, now, the cool thing is, I've got to find the right one. Um, okay, so this tooth, I, I guess I did glue them back in, but this tooth will actually wrap around and go down into here. When I pull that out, it'll be about that long. Um, so, and that's true of all rodents. So their teeth, the incisors, which they've got two in the front, two in the bottom, um, two in the top, two in the bottom, um, they'll just continue to just grow. And that's why they have to chew on things. So, you know, if you have a mouse in your attic or something, you hear that constant chewing, don't blame him. He's got to do it, you know. Um, uh, the part in here is the nasal concha. So if it has a whole lot and their nose is long, then they're probably going to be good smellers. Um, if their eyes are tiny, then they might be nocturnal. They might not depend on their eyes. So there's a lot of little things you have to look at to try and you can figure a lot out. Um, for them, it's all, you know, molars right here. So it's all for they cut the wood and then they just grind it. And then, of course, we saw the scat earlier, the one that looks like chicken nuggets, right? Everybody remembers that, right? <clears throat> we didn't have chicken nuggets tonight, did we? Sorry. Yeah. Did you uh, protect, keep a beaver from chewing, like in captivity, and you let them chew on that, that the people continue to grow out? Oh, yeah, yeah. And you can see it in, like, pet, people that have pet guinea pigs. You know, their teeth will just, I mean, they'll just keep going around. And if they got no help, I mean, it'll, it'll go around and go, it'll stick them right through the throat. So it'll come right around and get them. And then they bring them into vets, which that kind of creeps me out. They actually clip the teeth. That just doesn't sound right. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> okay, another, um, another one right here. So this is kind of a relative. Um, you might be able to guess what this is. Somebody collect, I'm going to put the tag underneath. Somebody else collected this and gave it to me, which I was very happy about. But you can see it has a 22 hole in the top of the head there. Um, so does anybody know what this one is? It's a non-native nutria. OK, so this one you might find you know, around Spring Lake or something like that. So this one's a nutria. So very similar, but if you look at the heads, of course, um, this one's flatter. The eyes are up, seated even a little bit higher. All right. OK, and um, here I have a, a whole entire body. OK. Anybody have any idea who that might be? It's about like this long with the tail. No. Nope. No. Nope. Something you don't want in your house. Think about New York City, Houston. It's a rat. Um, so because I own snakes, I had rats, so I just decided to get one and put it in here. But... Um, so, yeah, so rats, and so here is the size of a, a rat skull. Um, don't worry, I'll eat with my hands later. <clears throat> okay, now here is one that we're going to, it's basically a herbivore, but it's, it's a lot different, okay, and... It's got really big eyes, and it does have, and the eyes are on the side. So the little phrase, eyes on the side, it can run and hide. Eyes in the front, it can run and hunt. I don't know, cute little thing, right? Um, so anybody have any idea these live all through the hill country and west? Rabbit. What kind of rabbit? Jackrabbit. Okay, this one's a jackrabbit. Um, there's a way to tell on the back of the skull. You can count the teeth, too, but this one's a jackrabbit. Um, so that's a jackrabbit. And then to compare it to a 
a regular cottontail, eastern cottontail. This is a small um, jackrabbit, but here's an eastern <laughs> cottontail. So they are very similar. <clears throat> okay, moving into something that is not necessarily a herbivore, not necessarily a carnivore. So it's an omnivore. And <clears throat> okay, I never do this thing right. Okay, so <clears throat> this one, right up here where the brain is, you can see there isn't a whole lot there. Um, I'll show you the back. Um, so, yeah, so this is where the, the cranial capacity would be. This is part of his, um, that actually goes there. But um, you can see that one doesn't have much cranial capacity. So take a guess at who that might be. It's a possum. It's a possum. Um, they are cute. They are a little bit dumb sometimes, but um, they, um, I mean, look at how cute that is. I mean, that's just extremely cute. Um, <clears throat> okay, but remember, they do have the 50 teeth, so they have, um, they have incisors up here. They've got their canines, premolars, and molars, and they pretty much can do a little bit of everything. So, Anybody that's had chickens before that didn't make a chicken house like I make them, you've had probably these come in and do something to your chickens or whatever. You know, and they poop black too, so you know what else they eat. Um, all the fruits that are coming out right now. Um, and <clears throat> their eyes are very, very tiny right here. Um, I don't know what all this space is other than it's probably for muscle to hook because right here, um, that's why, I don't know, the old term bonehead, okay, came from where you would have this big ridge, you know, and you had a bony head. And so it's actually for grabbing, eating, chewing, and so that, that's muscle attachment up there or calling a muscle head or whatever, you know, because uh, that's, <laughs> shouldn't do that while you're drinking, right? Um, but yeah, it's for, for chewing. All right, now into the exciting things. All right, so let's see, here we go. We'll do some carnivores here. We'll see if you can get these. I didn't kill any of these. I legally possessed them, okay? So we'll start out with this guy. It's not, not the neighbor's dog. <laughs> okay. So, whoa, that's kind of big. Um, all right, I'll show it from here. It'll be easier. Okay, if you look, um, it's got um, some really big teeth right here. And if you remember from what Pamela Owens talked about last time, um, anybody have any clue what that is? Other than you right now. No, nope, not a bear. No, nope, bigger than a coyote. It's a wolf. Yep, it's a wolf. Um, so this one's actually a timber wolf. I actually knew a taxidermist, and they don't use the skulls, and so he had a big bag of heads, and then, um, and so I got lucky, man. I got to get them. My wife still does not appreciate me to this day. It makes me a headhunter. <laughs> so I wrote the dental formula on this. Um, so in the upper, they have 20 teeth, and in the lower, they'll have 22. Um, so it's got the three, um, three on each side for the incisors, the one canine, the three premolars, and no, let's see, no, four premolars, and then three molars. So, and that's the molar that crushes bone. Um, so I, when I went to a wolf preserve once, um, they said if they eat a deer, the only thing that they will not eat, I mean, they consume every bone on the body except for the jaw and the teeth. They can't, they can't chew them. But everything else, they can completely crunch it. I mean, they just move it like, it, like butter, just, and it's gone. So, <clears throat> so they, they use their food um, well. All right, here's a coyote, so you can see the the size difference. 
You can also see from the top of the head um, some of the difference, like here with this bone. Um, some of them, you can, when you turn them around and you look, uh, these right here are called auditory bulla. And if they're enlarged and, and big, like right there, then that usually is a good indicator they have good hearing. Um, and of course, you know their ears you know, can direct and, and catch sound. Unlike ours, if we're standing in the woods and a sound goes off behind us, it could ricochet on something in front of us and we think it's in front. So you, we don't always get it. You know, that's why it's good if you're birding, right? Pick your ears up and go like this and figure out where it's coming from. <clears throat> okay, let's see. All right, here's another guy. Now this one, I have not seen them around here, but I've heard reports of them being around. So it's a flattened head. Um, I'll show this one while you look at that one. It's flattened, but it also has very sharp teeth. Um, so whenever you see, so far, whenever you've seen a flattened head, where do you think that thing lives? In the water. Um, the eyes are up, so they're in the front, so it can hunt. Oh, who said otter? Oh, yes. Okay, it's an otter. Um, it's a river otter. Um, and they'll eat a lot of fish. Um, you know, they'll eat whatever they can grab. Um, but, you know, you can see they, some of the, even their molars and premolars are pretty sharp, too. So this is a, a mustelid, and so they, they're kind of related with the skunks. And speaking of skunk, nope, doesn't smell bad, <clears throat> but this is a skunk. Yeah, and for, if you ever, if you want to um, get skulls, the way that I have done them is, um, you know, it's a little gross. You have to be in the mood. Dick has caught me in the action of getting a skull once before on the side of the road. Hey, can you believe that? And he found me. Um, so, <clears throat> with an ax. So, in my car, I have snake sticks. I've got pillowcases. I have all kinds of things. But I also have an axe. Um, <laughs> right in there, man. Um, so <clears throat> it's not for doing anything like arsenic and old lace or something. But it's um, so if you remove the head and then you just sit it out, I sit it in a cage. I let like bugs kind of come and get it. And then I'll take it from that point. I'll try and peel some of the skin off carefully. Then I sit it in a container with peroxide, and then you have to sit there and pick at it. It's a little bit gross, you know, it's not for everybody, but, um, you know, you would not be looking at all these if somebody didn't do that, right? <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I mean, it would it'd be better to have, like, domestic beetles, but I have put them on anthills. Some of them have done something, and some of them have not. Um, all right, the two foxes. So I'm going to show you something really cool about these. Um, let me get a better one. All right, so there's the red fox and the gray fox, and this is where the Latin name comes in handy because um, we're going to use the Latin name because it's almost like they're written on their head. So, <clears throat> um, I don't know. Is that Okay, so this one makes a V uh, right here. So that's for vulpes, and that would be a red fox. This one makes a U for Eurocyon, scenario argenteus, and that's a gray fox. So, I mean, you don't even have to think about it, right? You just, the Latin name is right on the top of the head. So, but um, you can see the skull difference easy in size. Um, and, you know, the gray fox, just like, you know, as mentioned before, is more of like a cat. This is more like a dog. Um, and so there's the size difference. And that, those are like typically sized, you know, adult fox, you know, red and, and gray. There's one in the middle of 290. Yeah, it, it's summer. It's a little bit. I like to get them fresh, you know. That one might be a little too much for me. <clears throat> okay, 
So this one is kind of a, a prize one. Um, this came from far up north. I don't know that anybody's going to guess this one, but I got to throw it out here for fun. Texas, far north United States. Oh no, U U.S. like like upstate New York. Um, so <clears throat> this one, um, eyes are in the front. Um, it's. It's related to the mustelids, um, and it, it's a pretty big skull. Um, wolverine. wolverine. Okay, smaller than a wolverine. Huh? A fisher. It's a fisher. It's a fisher. Yep, it's a fisher. So if you don't know what a fisher is, you got to look it up. Um, it's basically a, a lot like a, a martin, but a martin would be smaller than one of these. A weasel would even be smaller. Um, and this is a, a fisher. Um, they have also a big bony ridge here for attaching because they're, they're known for like being quite voracious um, for their size. You know, they're like this and they'll take down all kinds of things. Um, like it's almost like a weasel being this big can take down, you know, a large rabbit. And they just grab it by the throat until the thing just wears out. And they just go for the ride. So, um, all right, <clears throat> got to do, yes? Yeah, it has a little bit of one, not, not huge. Um, but yeah, but I mean, it still would be a lot of muscle coming over here and wrapping around. But not like a gorilla, I guess. Um, they have, okay. Oh, mountain lion. Yeah, hang on, I got one of them. All right, anybody know what this is? Okay, so look at the teeth. Um, you have a lot of molars, okay, it's not like you know, this is a massive carnivore. The eyes are in the front, but they're little. Um, but it has big canines. Um, it's got good nose, good brain, um, and big um, auditory bullet, so it's got good hearing. Probably not good vision. Good smell, good hearing, not very good vision. Black bear. Yeah, so... Um, and I know these can't see that well, and they can hear and smell well because I've been around a lot of black bear. So it's been kind of fun, you know, um, for that. But, you know, and you get to test them out, watch my wife run faster than she's ever run. It's funny. Um, oh, you didn't record that part, Dick. He's going he's gonna to share that part. Um, <clears throat> so this is, this is black bear, and I'm, I'm just going to pass that one around because that one's really cool. Um, and here is... A mountain lion, cougar, puma, catamount, wherever you come from. Um, so <clears throat> this one, it's got glue all over it because it was inside a, a specimen and then the guy just decided to part with it um, and give it to me, which I was so happy. Um, so, but they're um, cats, you know, their, their heads are a little more compact and you can see all the the teeth back here for just tearing flesh, um, which this one is also super, super cool. And a bobcat is going to look like this. So here's this, a bobcat compared to a mountain lion. So nobody should ever mistake these, okay? <laughs> Not alive, dead, head, whatever. Don't, don't mistake them because there's a huge size difference, 200 pounds, to 20 pounds. <clears throat> All right, quiz question, because I think, oh, I'm out of time. I gotta... All right, so, huge cranial capacity. I don't have the whole skull. Um, that's what I found. I found it in California on the beach. Sea lion. Sea lion. It's a sea lion. So um, it took me a while to figure it out because I didn't have the whole thing. No teeth, no nothing, but thank goodness for these beautiful pictures. You know, I could just go, oh, perfect. It looked exactly like that. Um, so that's a sea lion. Um, it, I'll have these up here, and then if you guys want to look during break, you can look through because I have um, snapping turtle. And then anybody know what that is? 
Gar, um, Snow Goose, oh wait, was this? No, Wild Turkey, sorry, Snow Goose is in here. This, this one's from 1985. I don't even know who was alive back then, but um, so. All right, thank you all, and I'll put them over here.